It's a story of tenacity and grit and determination. Great creativity works harder. We needed a position that made us both distinctive and salient. My favourite is the Johnny Wilkinson rugby ad. Maybe it's just because we managed to make French people enthusiastic and optimistic. <laughs> you know, I think we've managed to do something in all of our films that generates fame. So those ROI numbers are the best that we have in Diageo and they compare extremely well against other beer. Maiden Moore has galvanised the team behind a singular platform idea. The work that we were doing doesn't just work for us as a business but also is connecting to people in culture. In essence it's the story of a brand Maiden Moore. So Guinness is a stout. A stout is a wonderful type of beer that has more flavour to it. That flavour comes from roasting the barley. It was first chosen by Arthur Guinness back in 1759 when he opened his brewery because everyone else was doing ale. And that attitude, that sense of having something more to offer is an attitude that pervades Guinness right from its beginnings and that very visionary founder that we had through to how we act today. So it's um, unbelievably brewed in nearly 60 countries around the world. In Africa, they think Guinness is an African brand, which is interesting. Drank and enjoyed in over 150 countries around the world. The black beer we know in GB in Ireland, you know, distinctive black pint with the white head, is very different from Southeast Asia and Africa, where it's sold in bottles and called Foreign Extra Stout. And that creates its challenges because, you know, when you're building a difference in the brand on the product point of difference, and it's different in most countries, it makes it very difficult to hold a global strategy together. Some of the fundamental truths of Guinness um, remain true for every single Guinness in every place and every table that it's on. You know, that powerful flavour, that sense of boldness. Um, but it's a beer, and beer is an everyday category that's a welcome friend. And to be that, you need to connect to people, and that means that you want a sense of local connection as well. So that point of product difference really created issues when we're trying to find a unified strategy globally at a time when the economic environment was very challenging and we needed, like most businesses, to really solidify everything behind one positioning for efficiency's sake. A position which is about a shared attitude and belief that's shared between the brand and the drinkers. Yeah, 2012 was an interesting time in beer um, and, and real heat on Guinness to try and stay big at a time when people were pulling back on spending. And actually that disproportionately affected Guinness versus some other beers because we are a great on-trade brand and the experience of Guinness is skewed to the on-trade. Price elasticity was a challenge for us, so there's two ways to address that. One is you either reduce price, which means that you also reduce your margin and clearly we wanted to improve our margin ROI or you can uh, increase the value of your brand such that people are willing to pay the premium price for it and we took the latter choice clearly. What we were looking for is to make sure that we had real cultural traction, that we weren't a brand that gets pulled back into its past and its tradition and its heritage, that, it's, that it feels relevant to today. It's unusual for creativity to be in itself an objective but Guinness has got such a weight of responsibility behind it from its heritage of great advertising over the years that you know, it creates creativity as being an objective in itself rather than an output. We also know that salience is an important driver for, for beer and for Guinness in particular. When we're more top of mind, we just simply get ordered more often. So brand fame as a route to salience and a driving affinity was really crucial for us. And the best way to get across plot, carrot and jeopardy and that kind of drama clearly is TV. So the idea of boldness from shared philosophy and belief from beer brand and drinker really led to a strategic thought, which was Guinness is a bold beer for people that make bold choices in life, um, summarised by the line made a more. But obviously it's more than the line, it's more than an advertising idea, it's a platform idea, global platform idea that unifies people, beer and brewer. So the first phase of work on Made and More, um, we brought out two ads, Cloud and Clock. And what they were both trying to do was show that you can break past the constraints of the everyday and the normal. It's about carving your own path and the joy that that brings to yourself and to others. Cloud, for example, was a cloud that breaks away from the clouds in the sky, floats into a city and then helps the fire brigade put out a fire, which was um, a metaphor for um, Made and More. You see, he wasn't just a cloud. He was a cloud made of more. And a clock that changes time. So quite magical, enchanting stories of what it means to have more character, to see things differently. And imagine 
if I made precious moments less momentary. The problem of relying on inanimate objects in order to tell the story created issues because people couldn't understand why Guinness had the right to tell stories about Maid of Moor and what it had to do with the beer. And secondly, the ROI wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be, which created its own challenges in itself because any other time any weaker brand would have thrown the baby out with the bathwater and started again. But um, the agency and the client alike had the courage of their convictions to carry on and try again. So the second iteration was really to create a connective tissue between what's unique and distinctive about the beer and the platform idea that is made a more. Um, what makes the beer signified as being more characterful and more tasteful um, and having more integrity and more substance is the surge. It's that thing that really signifies Guinness as being different and it's a thing that people wait for and has a kind of elemental nature to it of breaking waves. And the way that we did that was through um, some extraordinary creative filmed from within a wave as it surged and we showed some very simple work that just brings alive that power. The ROI was better in both markets, in GB and Ireland. But there was a significant problem that came up in, in research where um, the history of advertising for Guinness has really been told on the back of humanity and character and integrity. And Surge and Clock and Cloud before it, so the use of metaphors, um, the use of inanimate objects, really was at odds with the heritage that people had seen in the advertising that came from Guinness over the years. So we made the decision to go back and create stories around people who represent made of more. Anyone who's worked on Guinness for any time knows that the DNA of the brand is three words in the way that they combine. Power, goodness and communion. That boldness that we talk about is the expression of those three things together. The basketball ad is what you see is that you get a powerful sense of strength and physicality but also the power of friendship which is what we mean by communion. It's not sappy, it's very, it's very masculine, it's very strong and there's a sense of connection and which is the same connection then as a really good pint with your friends in the pub. Loyalty. Friendship. The choices we make reveal the true nature of our character. An amazing emotional story and it still makes me well up when I think about it today. For uh, an ad that was going to run in GB in Ireland, uh, we made quite a surprising choice. And we made an ad about the Society of Elegant Gentlemen from the Congo. A group of friends who, despite um, the war-torn um, region they come from and economic hardship, by the day work hard and toil in the land and by night dress up in flamboyant clothes and celebrate and dance together. And actually what is amazing I think about that ad is the way that that self-confidence, that determination to be who you want to be and what and why lifts not just each other but a whole room. This is men of character who actually get stronger because they're together as well. It's got a joy to it, it has a sense of, I think it gives all of us an inspiring sense of the possible. And that's what we mean by being made of more. And just make the world feel a better place through their actions um, and through their character. An incredible story of resilience and character and flamboyance in the face of um, quite hard economic and war-torn environment. Yeah, it's really encouraging to see that we were getting better. One of the things that made us better was how we were harnessing that creativity. Those ads are deliberately quite epic. You know, everything from the way the music is put together, the vibrancy of the colour. You know, within Sapeurs we're using the poetry of Invictus. All of that creative power is directed against making sure that we're having a bigger impact with the consumer. And our return on investment uh, calculations, not just from the TV, but across the whole programme of work that Guinness was doing, um, was showing that Made and More was, was connecting ever more strongly. As, as we made it more human, as we brought to life what was important. I think what's powerful about Made and More as a platform for us is that it has a very single, singular heart but actually it has the breadth that we can use it in different ways in different places. And rugby is an entirely different place than this 
elegant gentleman of the Congo. But it's a place that's very Guinness. Guinness has, you know, a, a long history with, with rugby. And what we wanted to do was make sure that Guinness was vibrant within the rugby world. We produced a film for each of the home nations. So the GB film was around Johnny Wilkinson and how he managed to even convinced the French that an Englishman can be someone they appreciate and admire when he was playing for Toulon. Il arrive à Toulon, abîmé et le corps un peu après de longues blessures, où tout le monde doutait. Il était dévoué, corps et âme. Humilité, courage et solidaire. C'est un gentleman, là. Hein? Il faisait jamais de coups bas. Il en mettait jamais une. L'homme parfait. Il est l'âme de la ville. Il est dans nos cœurs. Bout de route. Merci, Sir Johnny. And that the sense of joy that that brings, not just to those French fans, to, but the, to those of us watching, represents the difference that rugby makes in people's lives. And that connects for us quite intuitively to those joyful moments connecting with others in the pub over a great beer. We told the story of how Munster kind of used team spirit in order to overcome the All Blacks in the 70s. With a single tackle, he stopped Goliath dead. And every Irishman grew 12 feet tall. For Wales, the story of Shane Williams being told that he was too small to play international rugby and despite that, becoming one of the most celebrated players in Welsh rugby history. It was the size of his heart, the power of his ambition. strength of his character. And then Bill McLaren, you know, becoming one of the, the best loved commentators in What a game this is turning out to be. We haven't had scenes like this at Murrayfield since 1925. Incredibly powerful stories and again another iteration we tell the right story about the right kind of character and show people who are bold enough, who carve their own path and do things that others said couldn't be possible to show that great things can happen when you do that um, is great for the brand, great for the brewer and great for our eye for the business. And then people that saw the rugby work, um, I think Mill Brown tracking showed that 66% of them would go on and talk about that work to their friends in the pub against an average of about 46%. So incredibly powerful cultural context, um, cultural power of these films and the ability to talk about characters that we all admire and there's a in each one of the films there's an implicit life lesson I think we can all take out of it and that makes it incredibly powerful as a piece of communication. You know in the end Diageo is a hard-nosed commercial business and we will only get the level of spend behind Guinness that we need to keep it salient if we can show the business that it's worthwhile doing that. The numbers on Made of More got progressively better. Revenue ROI increased to £19.90 for £1 spent. Profit ROI £3.88 for every £1 spent. Both of which are above the pre made of more norm and actually more importantly above the category norm. So we outperform the category by um, 1.6. Well, when you go back into our core brand information, our brand tracking, our equity and so on, what we saw was that despite a decline in many other beers, we were holding volume share. We were also seeing a decrease in our price sensitivity, which was key at a time when lots of people were trading down in beer. And we're seeing that salience, that sense, which is so fundamental, that top of mind awareness was holding strong and getting stronger. Since that paper was written, the next piece of work that was made was more rugby work, some highly recognised work around Gareth Thomas, um, which was telling the story of somebody carving their own path but supported by a network of other strong individuals. What I particularly love about that film is that we've built in some of what we've learnt across some of the other films. Everything I went through out there was nothing compared to the demons inside. In my darkest hour, I turned to my teammates, telling them I was gay. That was the toughest thing I've ever done. But when I needed them the most, they were there for me. Um, it is a powerful, moving story, but it's also just, you know, you're built to this powerful, kind of naked exposure, and it's still that kind of humour and that sense of delight and that sense of also the connectedness between people. We've continued to 
build on the idea further and we will continue into the future. Most recently we told the story of John Hammond who was a music producer and civil rights activist in the US in the 30s and 40s who really stood up for their rights and particularly at a time when jazz music was banned. All John Hammond wanted was great jazz. One of the key learnings is the ability to recognise when a strategy is right but the execution is wrong and to not throw everything out together uh, is certainly a lesson I've learned. Yeah, the, uh, Made and More has been incredibly successful for both the client team and the agency team. It's picked up over 100 creative awards. It's won 10 Cannes Lions. Sapers was the, was the fourth most awarded film globally in 2012. And for the client team, and a great recognition for Diageo being awarded Advertiser of the Year by Campaign magazine in 2012. The response from people from all over the world was really positive, from you know the US, Africa, um, GB in Ireland. Between these things, you get a sense that Guinness means something in people's lives. Just in the way you could talk to a friend or talk to uh, a consumer in a, in a piece of market research, the way they talk about Guinness with spirit and with heart and a brand with soul. Reduction of price elasticity was important for us, clearly, because we wanted to increase volume whilst maintaining margin, which is an incredibly hard thing to do, um, given the macroeconomic environment at the time and the competitive landscape. On the back of the Made and More campaign, we um, stemmed the volume decline in the market, despite the total category decline. But the ability to maintain margin meant that we actually increased value share as well as volume share, which is the holy grail, I think, for um, advertising communications. And again, um, an ROI like we've never seen before. I mean, much better than all that came before. So we continue to improve and we continue to learn. The narrative in the advertising industry now is really around responsible advertising and purpose for brands. So when you see things like Gareth Thomas um, and uh, the ability for the brands to tell story of supporting LGBT, for example, and the, the character and integrity that Gareth Thomas had and the support of his teammates enabled him in such a macho environment as rugby to, to come out as being gay. I think there's um, as a life lesson in there, which again, I think is incredibly powerful. It's something that's really added an extra um, impetus behind the brands, a real desire to make a difference in the world, not just to advertise and to, to build the business. The, the two aren't in conflict. There is always questioning, there is always pressure. If something's not perfect, is not powerful and not maybe delivering to the extraordinary standards that Guinness had set before. It could be easy to unravel everything because it can be very exciting to go off and do something else, to build something new from the start. But actually what these guys did was learn through grit and determination and actually a passion for what was right, um, how to keep making it better and how to evolve into the right place. It requires the agency and client team to have a very solid relationship and the ability to, I think, take risks. Um, to learn quickly by them and then to move on. Um, and it's one that I think we all find incredibly rewarding. The journey is um, really only just started. What made the good?